Mike Carlin, right here in the locker room. And Mike, you uh, you were a coach at Plymouth White Marsh, basketball coach. You're my basketball guru. And um, when you told me about our our, our guest, I, I you know obviously Google him, read him. And, uh, 14-year NBA career, went to Plymouth White Marsh where you coached them, right? Mm-hmm. Helped them out. University yeah. of Miami. Yep. And what 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 really four year starter? What really intrigued me, you talked about the man more than you talked about the athlete, which is a, a credit to he's, him. He's he's unbelievable, a phenomenal guy. Yeah. All right, let's go it's to the Maserati, the Mainline Sports Hotline, and welcome into the locker room former 76er, 14 year NBA career, John Salmons. Good morning, John. Good morning. Morning. How hey, you doing? hey, John, I got to tell you, your, your, your coach, your former coach is in here singing the praises of John Salmon, man. He loves you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. appreciate that. Hey, John, real quick, uh, before we get into your time at, at uh, Plymouth White Marsh and my, at the uh, U, Miami, what was it like playing for the, for the Sixers, your hometown team? That had to be pretty cool when you, when you knew you were going to, to the Sixers. Yeah, it was great. It was, a, it was literally a dream come true. Um, you know, I always I grew up watching Barkley play. I was a huge uh, Charles Barkley fan and sister fan. And uh, when it came down to the draft, I ended up. No, I actually got drafted by the Spurs, but that same night I got traded to the Sixers. So when that trade went down, it was like a shock to me, my fan, everybody. You know, we just went crazy. Hey, John. So you're our guest, and the focus is on you. But before we get started with the interview, tell me, what kind of coach was Mike Carlin? <laughs> <laughs> coach Carlin was great. Man. That, that, whole, that, whole, that whole coaching staff was great. Man. That, that whole coaching staff. Man. It's still, to this day, all these years later, um, I always tell them it's my favorite coaching staff, even college, that's NBA. Um, oh, that's, that's very, very nice. Thing. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, hey, John, uh, John, uh, Mike told us that when you were getting recruited out of Plymouth White Marsh, you, you had your kind of mind made up that you were going to go to UConn. And Mike says, you got to go down and ch- check out Miami. And he was telling us that yeah. story. So you fly down there, first time you're ever on a plane. Tell us about that experience when you leave Plymouth White Marsh and you go to visit the U. I mean, it was like, it was like, what is this? <laughs> like, it, it was <laughs> like, don't come from you know, cold, snowy, <laughs> Philly to, you know, palm trees and everything else down Miami. It was like, how can I pass this up? <laughs> like, it was like heaven going down there. So it was like, once I got down there and I met the coaches in person, I met all uh, all the, the players that was on the team at the time. It was a no-brainer to me. It was like, I want to leave then. Like, I wanted to stay down there. So. <laughs> It was a no-brainer. Hey, hey, John, down in Miami, the nightlife and, and the weather and you know a lot of distractions. How hard is it to play a big time at a big time program in a location like the U? Um, it can be difficult if you let it if you if you let it uh, be difficult. Um, but I was for the most part. I'm not claiming to be a fire boy or anything like that. But for the most part, I knew my goals to made to the to the to the NBA. So I stay focused for the most part. Um but it is a lot of distractions and <laughs> you definitely can be uh distracted down there and lose focus quick. That that, that was that was one of the, the one of the, at the time when I was there that we didn't have on campus arena. So we we, we played at the old um, it was American Airlines Arena, uh, where the Miami Heat used to play. Yes. And because, first of all, it's a, it's a, it was a huge arena. It held like 20,000. So we wasn't, you know, going to pack the 20,000 out of 20,000 uh, people arena anyway. But um, in Miami, it's always something to do. Like just standing outside because of the weather you can find something to do. So we didn't get that many fans back in the back when I was in the in the school because it was always something else to do. It was all the students or you know the fans was always had options to do something else. So um, that's how distracting it is in Miami. Well, John, it's Mike. It's Coach Mike. How so, you doing, Coach? <laughs> so listen, I, I was I was telling these guys all week when we were talking about having you, and I was like, just don't 
think of him as a basketball player. Think of him truly the kind of person that I know you are. Um, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's being affiliated with, you know, fellowship of Christian athletes and, and helping out. You know, I said, just sometimes people are quiet. Doesn't mean you're quiet to the point where there's something wrong with you kind of thing. Like, like right. the, the media can get involved and, oh, he's quiet. He must be something wrong. You can be yeah. quiet in a good way. And John has proven that his whole life. Uh, and now being a family man the way you are, but like coming out of high school, Billy, player of the year, Philadelphia Inquirer. Right. Think of all the kids that come out of Philadelphia right. in that area. He's player of the year. Yeah. You go down to Miami for four years. You start in, a, what, like 107 consecutive starts. Doesn't get hurt. Yeah. You know, doesn't get in trouble where the coach says, hey, we're taking you. You're not playing the next game. Right. You never have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. And then he, he comes out of the school with, he's, he's the first player in school history to have a thousand, over 1,000 points. Over, you know, in rebounds, 687, 400 assists, 150 steals. You talk about an all-around player, that's what got him to the next level in the NBA. But the biggest thing that this doesn't talk about is who he had to play night in, night out. Yeah, Mike was telling me, uh, John, that you, you went up against the NBA's elite. You went up against everybody, every other team's best player. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how, you know, I saw my, my, my freshman year, I quickly realized the way I'm going to get on the court is defensively. So I always took the challenge to, you know, guard the, the, the best player, the best player player on the other team. And early on in my career, that's how I got on the court. That's how I stayed on the court. So I learned that. Um, and uh, the whole rest of my career, that's always been my staple to get on the court. Um and then from there, you know, you start to, you know, get more comfortable offensively and you start to do your thing offensively. But my goal was always to be the best defender and guard the best player on, on the opposite team. We're talking with uh, John Salmons, former 76er, went to Plymouth White Marsh and the University of Miami. Your, uh, your team is in the Final Four. Playing against the team yeah. he thought he was going to go to, <laughs> yeah. UConn. Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually down, I'm actually in Houston right now. We're oh. down here with a bunch of friends, and we are um, getting ready to a little later go down to the game. Hey, John, John, let me ask you this question. Uh, Mike and I were doing throughout the show, and Josh, we're talking about leadership. You know, there's people that lead by example. There's people that, you know, are vo- vocal leaders. Where, 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 where were you? Where did you stand? Um, early on, I was. Uh, I led by example. That was, you know, that was who I was. I always took pride in, you know, um, being the first guy there, last guy to leave, uh, playing hard, doing the right, doing the right thing. One thing, uh, Coach Brown, uh, Larry Brown, he used to be, he was my uh, coach my rookie year, was uh, play the right way, play the right way. He preached that every day. Uh, And I took pride in that. Um, And I tried to lead by example that way. But, Later on in my career, the older I got and the younger the NBA got, I realized I had to, you know, do a little bit more than that and be more of a vocal leader in the locker room. And later in my career, uh, I became more of a, a, a vocal leader. That's beautiful. Hey, hey, John, you talked about, you know, night in, night out playing against the best. Is If, if you had, and it's, sometimes it's a hard question, but think about it. If you, was there a player out there that you knew you were going against that you, you knew that this is going to be a really hard night for me tonight? Like like for like trying to sh- shut him uh, down I mean, scoring wise. In the NBA, that's every night. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see that's, that's what I want. The, that's what yeah, I want the, the people truth, to hear. Right, right. right exactly that. I mean, of course, there's different levels to it. Like you know, so this this is the thing. Like say. Uh, like a lot of times you might play, you might have a back to back. You might play Miami, and then the next night you fly, or after the game you fly. Uh, uh, after the game you fly to Orlando and you play the Magic the, the very next night. Now it's no disrespect to whoever I'm guarding on the Magic, but whoever I'm guarding on the Magic it becomes drastically more easier after I just played against right. LeBron the night before. <laughs> yeah, um, I can imagine. But, you know, 
every night, you know, somebody can give you 30 on the opposite team. Right. Like, see, that's why um, they call the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, like, hey John, you, let me ask you. When I, came, when I came in the league, it was very wing driven. Like when I first got in the league, like I'm, I'm, I'm guarding the Kobe, 